Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our backyard. Today's video is the August garden tour. And it is the end of August, and oh my gosh, there are some beautiful blooms out in the garden that I would like to share with you. So, usually I split this into two videos and I'm going to do that again today just because I do pretty much the sunny areas to the garden and then the more shady areas to the garden during the season when there's quite a bit of growth and so I'm going to do that again this month and today I'm going to focus on the sunny parts to the garden. My name is Crystal. I garden south of Houston in zone 9 close to the Texas Gulf Coast and we are hot and humid and have heavy clay soil and we typically can get a lot of rain. So I am going to go over in this area first. I've got a gorgeous red porter weed that is blooming beautifully. So I don't know how well this can be picked up on camera but this porter weed was not blooming a few days ago it was i could tell it was getting started you know getting ready to start blooming but it is just blooming beautifully which is wonderful because my hummingbirds are over here and they absolutely love porter weed i have up at the top of the screen, I'm going to put a link to a video that I did on porterweed. And porterweed is a member of the verbena family. What's unique about this plant is it has a very long bloom stem or bloom spike. You've heard me talk about this. And porterweed only will bloom along a section each day. But its claim to fame is it will refill with nectar throughout the day. And so this is a huge hit with butterflies and hummingbirds and your native bees. Not so much the honeybees, but your native bees. Oh, and I've got a little hummer right over here on the flame acanthus. She's, <laughs> she's talking. So right next to this gorgeous red porter weed in it. I do have this one in a container and it is the bloom spikes are taller than my six and a half foot fence so it is just large and loving its life and right next to it I have a volunteer volunteer blue porter weed and the blue porter weed is a little bit different because it has a much thinner bloom spike and you're going to you're going to say well gee isn't that a purple color and it does kind of look it more of a periwinkle um and you'll notice right next to it i have the pollinators go to both but if the red porter weed is blooming they go over there first as opposed to the blue porter weed so and next to it right over here I have purple and you can see that the purple porterweed is a little bit different color than the blue and its bloom spike is a lot thicker also it's like the red porterweed so I have multiple colors of porterweed in my garden and since I have a pollinator garden and I am gardening specifically for hummingbirds and butterflies and native bees, native pollinators, I am very interested in plants that attract them. And so that's why one of the reasons I'm so big on porterweed is because of all the life that comes in because of this plant. Okay. So hummingbirds are starting their migration. 
It's right at the end of August. Here in the Houston area, we typically see, oh, beginning of September is when, through that first week of September, when we see the most hummingbirds. And so I have started putting out my hummingbird feeders, my nectar feeders, and we're getting a few more hummingbirds in. Okay, let me go now to the southern part of my garden. Back along the south side of my house, I have tucked away here a little alcove, if you will, of plants. A lot of these plants I do have in containers. And the reason I have them in containers is because of I have a poor drainage back here. Not everything is planted in containers. I do have some in, um, in oh, quite a few in ground. I'm gonna get a little bit closer to the back. Okay, before <laughs> I go in the back, I wanted to show this pink porter weed. And this pink porter weed is getting ready to bloom. Look at all those blooms that are going to be coming out. <laughs> it was just like my red porter weed. It hadn't really been blooming, but I noticed the blooms were along the bloom spike, these little pink, beautiful pink flowers. And it's gonna probably look gorgeous tomorrow. So in the back, I have got firebush and the larger plants that you see here are my giant milkweed plants. You know I'm a huge fan of giant milkweed because it sustains so many of our monarch caterpillars. But let me go back and take a look at firebush. For us south of Houston, this is a fantastic bush. Firebush is phenomenal. It is a deciduous plant, meaning it will lose its leaves in the winter when you have a frost, but they turn a gorgeous color of a dark rust color in the fall, and you won't lose the leaves and they won't die back if you don't get a freeze. I actually have two different types of fire bush back here. I've got a larger leaf fire bush that has a larger bloom head on it and that it creates larger berries for the birds. And then I do have a smaller leaf fire bush that has smaller blooms. It blooms a little more prolifically and has smaller berries, but our life out here just loves this fire bush. Oh, and I love fire bush. It is a fantastic bush to have in the Southeast Texas garden. So I came back here to tape and I noticed I have a problem because I have some wilting going along here. And so I turned on the drip irrigation and found we have got a horrible leak in the back, way in the back here on our half inch pipe. Animals, which I'm assuming they are squirrels, have come and eaten through the uh, half foot section of, of the line, I guess, trying to get out water. And so none of my other plants here are getting, especially in the containers, are getting water. So we're gonna have to fix that and I'm gonna have to come and hand water because all of these plants a day or so ago were just gorgeous. The one thing I would like to note is I did put a Greg's Mist flower in this bed. I have it over in my tree bed also. It's flowering beautifully. And I have seen queen butterflies back here. This is one of their favorite flowering plants. Greg's Mist flower is a native Texas plant, 
but you can also get a blue mist flower um, in other states if you didn't if you can't find the Greg's mist queen butterflies monarchs love it too but queen butterflies go nuts for it it does have a compound for the male butterflies that's a part of a compound that they need for reproduction and so they look for this particular flower because of that okay let me come out and I have three beds now that I would like to share with you the center bed that I call the tree bed my trellis bed and then our newest bed which is in the center so let me go kind of back in this corner area this is the time of year that the vines that we plant just shine passion vine loves heat and humidity and i love passion vine all along these trellises they bring in butterflies they bring in a lot of different life you can grow passion vine for the beautiful flowers but also you can buy it um, bring it in and grow it for the fruit i grow passion vine for the caterpillars because the gulf coast fritillary caterpillar uses this plant as its host and so i usually have lots of gulf fritillaries flying around in the yard but down below i have the flame acanthus bush and this bush is a favorite of hummingbirds my hummer is here every, every all throughout the day they love this bush it's right next to the red <laughs> porter weed but this flame acanthus is native to texas and it's the perfect flower for a hummingbird and your your butterflies so this is a huge attractor down below so i've got a nectar plant it's also a host plant to a butterfly that we have here called the texas crescent and then the host plant to the gulf fritillary so when you have nectar plants and host plants together you do attract a lot of a lot of different life so this what we call our trellis bed pretty much has those two plants in it exclusively i do have some gabrera daisies down that in the springtime are really pretty um, but not a lot else going on in this bed just because these plants are are um, huge in and I come right next to it over in our tree bed some of my salvia as you notice I have not cut it back because it is flowering not beautifully but it's flowering to where I have the pollinators on it all day long and I did cut back this section from when we had hurricane barrel come through last month and so it's looking a little rough the tree bed is right now i'm going to come on over into the end and on the end of this the southern end of this tree bed i have the mounding lantana that i have told you about that i absolutely love and it's starting to going to go through another bloom cycle here which is good because my butterflies love lantana and what's interesting is I have something that loves to lay in my Greg's mist flower here and so um, they've got it kind of tamped down a little bit <laughs> here my Greg's mist flower isn't flowering as well in this side of my tree bed as opposed to over in the southern area of my garden and then on the ob absolute opposite other end i have kufia which is a cigar plant 
that's another hit with hummingbirds and butterflies. And then I have Mexican bush sage that is just starting to now do its fall bloom. And so it's just starting to get the purple, the purple flowers, which is, which is so pretty. The purple and the orange kufia right next to it go well together. Okay, and now next to the, tr the trellis bed is this new central bed. And this is my cardinal climber. And my cardinal climber is starting to bloom. I don't have hundreds of blooms yet, but I certainly have a lot of the red blooms that the hummingbirds just love. And we're starting to get hummingbirds now to wear their light they're wanting to I don't want to say fight but they certainly want to come in and control an area and because we have all these blooms for them we're attracting more let me come in I've got a little hummer that's over there on the end let's see if I can come in She's over there on the cardinal climber. Just going from one flower to the next. <laughs> and that is why I do plant this vine, is because it prolifically will start to flower soon. It's, it's flowering but it's going to start prolifically flowering real soon. For us, the end of August and through mid-September is just starting beautiful blooming and it will bloom beautifully through November. So down in this new central bed, I do have plants that have been performing very well. I've got a little Joe Pye weed that I did transplant. It's about three years old and I had it in a container and it's done really well, planted in ground. And then I've got Rose Marvel Salvia Nemorosa and it's starting to come up on, on a next flush. I cut it back and it's starting its growth. Behind it is a Porter weed, this is a red dwarf porter weed. And this is interesting to me because this has a different, the leaves are different. I do like the structure. And the bloom stalks or bloom spikes are narrow, like the like the blue porter weed. And this is a huge hit. It loves its life here. It gets full sun and it's just blooming incredible um, incredibly i am loving this dwarf porterweed and this is the only one that i have all the other ones are full sized so love it okay now i'm coming around the edge and i've got a yarrow and i forget the name of this yarrow but it is blooming a little bit better for me than it has in the summer. I have purchased a few, a couple things at the nursery. I think in um, my last video I showed you, I've got a Ruselia. I've got a new to me firebush. It has just a little bit different color flower. It's a little bit more vibrant. Back here I have Stokes Aster. And they're fall bloomers. This has just bloomed and bloomed and bloomed for me. But now my porter weed is starting to give it a little bit of shade. So it's not in the full sun until the afternoon, noonish in the afternoon, because this dwarf porter weed is not dwarf. It is over, it's taller with the bloom spikes than I am. I just love how it's been growing. And then I have coneflower. 
that is um, kind of on its downward trend. And then I have some leftover and reseeded Tithonia. So I have Tithonia sprinkled throughout here, which all the pollinators are going for. I wish I had a little bit more, but I don't. But I'm happy with what I have because our the hurricane that came through, Hurricane Barrel, just, just completely flattened this and killed most of it. And then I have Hot Lips back here, Hot Lips Salvia. And Hot Lips has not been doing great in the summer. It kind of is taking uh, some time off and not necessarily the most beautiful in the summer. So I'm going to see what's gonna happen with this in the fall. Okay, let me come in the back a little more. So in the back of this bed, I have had a container of Rucellia and it has grown, but they're kind of growing together here. Um, but this Rucellia is a favorite of my hummingbird that I have all year long. And then amongst here you can see is the vine that I grow from seed called the Cardinal Climber. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that sound on camera of the hummingbirds, but they kind of chirp a little bit. <laughs> I can't do it. And then right next to the trellis, I have my very large Mexican flame vine that I have in a container. And I am getting some blooms, which butterflies love, but I don't have a lot of blooms on it yet. So I am patiently waiting for its fall flush. Well, I'm back over here in the area where I started and I've got hummingbirds that are chasing each other away. So this is kind of a fun time of the day when they're a little bit protective and they're escorting each other out of out of the way. So I thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Oh, here's two. I don't know if you saw those or <laughs> can hear them. But I really hope you have a wonderful day today. And I hope to see you again soon.